Hi guys, Squirrel here and welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series on Microsoft Flight Simulator. The goal of this particular video will be to help you to find your house. In fact, to help you to find, well, any house or any place in the globe. It can be quite tricky when you look out the window, even if you're familiar with the area, just trying to find and pick out an individual house. So how do we do it? Well, unfortunately, currently, the GPS systems in Microsoft Flight Simulator don't allow us to put in custom waypoints. So even if we knew our coordinates of our particular destination, we can't actually punch them into the Garmin. However, I have found a way around that. I'm going to show you it. It does involve Notepad and editing a text file or two, but I'm sure you can do that. Anyway, if you want to enjoy more of these tutorial videos or indeed any of my Microsoft Flight Simulator content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. So for now, let's go and find somewhere to fly to. So the way we find anything on the Earth via GPS is with longitude and latitude coordinates. And what we need to do is find somewhere that we want to go, dig up the longitude latitude coordinates, punch them into a GPS system on the plane and fly towards that point. Unfortunately, in the current version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, none of the default aircraft allow you to enter a custom waypoint involving longitude and latitude. So we have to edit a text file. Well, don't worry about that, it's quite straightforward. First thing we need to worry about is where do we want to go? So let's find somewhere in the world to go to somebody's house. So let's maybe zoom in on the States. Let's maybe go for uh, Texas. How about San Antonio? That's quite big. Zoom in on San Antonio. We want some kind of suburb, somewhere where there's some nice houses. Let's flick over to satellite view. Uh, let's zoom into uh, here. This looks reasonably busy. And then let's go to, I don't know, Northampton. Sounds good. And maybe find some house on a corner. How about that one? This one here. So we left click on it. That's where exactly where we want to go. And down here, it's got a little preview picture and the coordinates. So click on those coordinates and it should show you that's what this guy's house looks like. If this happens to be you, I apologize. This is entirely random. Now, what we want to do is we want to copy this information here. This is the GPS coordinate. That's also the GPS coordinates expressed in a, in a decimal format. What we want is this, which is expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Then what you want to do is bring over a notepad and just paste that in there. Now we'll leave that there for a second. We need to get this into two different formats. You can see all it really is, is a north coordinate and a west coordinate. This may say south, this may say east, don't worry, just a letter. First thing we're going to do is split it up slightly. So we want uh, one version that has the N on the front and then it has a space after the degree, so it should say N29 degrees. And then we shall get rid of this bit here. So we've just got 30.24 minutes. So you can see all I've actually done is taken that part there and change it to just 30.24. Nothing particularly complex about that. Next one, we'll put a we'll move the w to the front the space and same thing again we'll put a full stop there and then just get rid of the rest of it and then put a little quote at the end so that's the first format that we need the second format so we'll copy that and do a different version the second format that we need is basically the same but easier we'll just press the n key at the front we want degrees we want minutes and we want seconds and we'll just get rid of the n then the same thing here we'll move that w to the front degrees minutes and seconds and get rid of the w off the end that is a, that is the two formats that i've seen in microsoft flight sim text files the only thing we want to do now is just put a comma in between them so i've just taken this information here and just translated it into two different formats essentially one of them has a, a minute symbol with a decimal and the other one separates out degrees minutes and seconds don't forget to include the quotes on the end here notice this one's a double quote and this has a single quote on the end and a decimal they're the two formats that you need 
Once you've done that, the rest is pretty straightforward. Let's jump back in the sim and do the rest. Oh, I almost forgot one other thing. We need to know the nearest airfield that we can fly from to get to this guy's house. So we want to click on directions and then we'll put airport and find out where the nearest airports are. Let's go back to the map view to make it a little bit easier. And it looks like the nearest airport to this guy is the San Antonio International Airport. Now, whichever particular point you're looking for on the map, you'll find a different airport. Try to find one that's a little bit more major if possible. And then what you want to do is you want to click on it, which will give you the name. So you want to take that name, San Antonio International Airport. Bring up a new tab in Google. Put San Antonio International Airport, IKAO. That should give us the code for that airport. There you go. IKAO is KSAT. That is the airport that we're going to fly in and out of now in Microsoft Flight Sim. Back in the simulator, click on World Map. You're going to need the Cessna 172G1000. It's important that you have the G1000. So make sure you pick that. If you've got multiple 172s, then you want the one, the G1000. So having got that, you want to then select your departure airport, which we know to be KSAT. Or put in whatever particular code you happen to have. And then put KSAT in as the destination as well. So we're flying from KSAT to KSAT. Click on flight conditions. Uh, make sure you put yourself on clear skies and midday. That way you'll be able to find the house much, much easier. Now what we want to do is we want to zoom into uh, KSAT here. We want to find some waypoint nearby. Now down here is open the filters. If you open the filters and scroll down, make sure that you've got nav aids and fix and r -nav position reports turned on. This puts all the different markers on the map because we just need to borrow one for a second. There we go. So near KSAT, we've got quite a few things. What we ideally like is these things. These are GPS coordinates, a little sort of diamond shape. So we've got this one nearby. It doesn't matter where it is. Just click on it and then click add. That will basically give us a routing from the airport to this waypoint back to the airport. What we're going to do is we're going to nick this. We're going to edit it and put our particular coordinates in. So now the last thing you want to do is click on save so click load save down the bottom click save doesn't really matter where you put it let's put it into uh this one here house dot flight and hit save what that's going to do is it's going to create four files a, a flight file and a plan file these are the two files that we're interested in so get yourself another notepad and drag the flight file into the notepad open it up a little bit and then bring in the notepad that you left earlier with the coordinates in it these are the two coordinates that we want and what you do is just scroll down and you want to find that waypoint that we chose earlier which i think was called zip l let's have a look yeah zip l so if you scroll down you'll find it here under atc aircraft zero as zip l so change the name of it let's just call it house because we're finding our house and notice the coordinates that it currently has is in the first format. So we're going to nick that particular coordinate format and we're going to replace that with this one. Then you want to copy the whole line and then scroll down a bit further so you find active, wave, uh, active flight plan and you want to put that in the exact same place as the existing one. So you've got this one here We'll put the new waypoint two in there. So instead of zip L, we now have house. And there you go. That's all there is to do on that file. So file, save, and then grab the plan file. Bring that into notepad. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to find zip L, which is here. So we'll call it house. Get rid of this IKO stuff. We don't need that. And then notice that the coordinate this time is in the second format. So we're going to grab that. And we're going to paste it into here. And save. And that's it. That's all we've got to do. Now we can jump in the aircraft and the plane will already be set up.
So now in the simulator, go back down, click load this time, and load the file house.plan or house.flight, it doesn't really matter which. And what you should find is it's now got San Antonio, but it's going to some random coordinates. And that is the house near San Antonio that we're going to go to. So now we'll just click fly. And here you are in the Cessna 172 with the G1000 screens, because you definitely picked the right one, correct? And what you'll find is the GPS system has already been set up. So if you zoom in, you'll see it's taken us from KSAT and the next waypoint is house. In fact, if we go down here and we click on the flight plan button, you'll notice the next waypoint is indeed house because our flight plan was KSAT to house back to KSAT. It also tells you the distance to track. So if you go up here, the house is currently at a burning of 095 or 95 degrees on the compass. You can see there's north. And it's telling us with this pink arrow, it's over there, it's in the east. And its distance is 7.3 nautical miles. Meanwhile, on the second screen, you can actually scroll the wheel in and out and see where you are. And you'll notice that the pink line ends and then it carries on to this waypoint called house. Don't worry, we need to fly directly to this triangle. That will be where the house is. Now, one final thing. If we want to try and find this on Google Maps exactly, we're going to have to keep referring back to the map. And a, and a map is always north. It's always oriented to the north. So ideally what we want to do is we want to fly over to house and then we want to kind of turn the aircraft around so it's facing north. It's going to make life a little bit easier in that sense. And the other thing is you need to have access to the drone camera to make this easier. You can look out the window and find it. But life is so much easier if you have access to the drone camera. And if you don't have to set up cameras, watch my previous tutorial video. So let's take off and get going. If you happen to know how to set up uh, the autopilot on G1000, go for it. This thing will fly you straight towards the house. But we'll just do it manually. As you can see, I've taken off and I'm basically turning around and aiming straight for that pink triangle I told you about, which is where it's telling us to go. And you can also see on the right sat nav map bar, that we are now pointing the aircraft towards the house. It's up to you while you fly, it doesn't really matter. But there you go. And if you actually zoom in, it'll tell you a bit more information. Let's trim the aircraft a second. There we go. If you actually zoom in, it'll tell you that the bearing is 98 degrees. We're doing 119, so we need to turn to the left. That number counts down to match the bearing on the top, the 97. There you go. Now, if you went for nice clear skies, you shouldn't have any wind to worry about either, because wind can obviously blow you off course and that kind of thing, but we're keeping it nice and simple today. That's all there is to it. Just basically fly towards that house waypoint. Keep that pink triangle at the top. Keep the pink line straight. And you'll be there in no time. Now, as you get closer, you'll probably want to zoom the map in a little bit. So all you need to do is just dial this range pointer here. And you can see we're past the pink line now. We're heading straight towards house. So I want to start thinking about trying to orient the plane so that it's facing north. So if we just turn around here, all we need to do is basically have the uh, little white aeroplane on the right screen pointing upwards. And that'll be pointing north. Let's try and do that. You can do it without, I mean, if you know the area, if you actually live here or something, then it's a whole lot easier anyway. But I'm just doing it because it will make it easy when we flick over to Google Maps here and try and find it. So we are very, very, very close to the house now. We're definitely in the vicinity of it. And I'm going to try and point the plane over the house, facing north then hit the pause key. There we go. So I've hit the pause key, which is the pause brake key, in case you didn't know. And the aircraft's pointing approximately north. Not exactly, but you know, whatever. So let's go to the drone camera and uh, just quickly take a look around. So we reckon this guy, if I send the drone camera upwards, you send the camera up, I reckon this looks very, very similar to the estate that we was looking at on Google Maps. Let's go out a bit more. 
And a bit more still. Okay. So now, because I know that that plane's pointing approximately north, I know that I'm oriented the right way. Because if I didn't do that, you know, the plane's probably pointing this way. I don't really watch the ways north. It just gets a bit more tricky. If I've got the plane pointing approximately north, this is a lot easier. So let's flick back to uh, Google Maps and see, just refresh your memory on where the house is. And here we go. This was the guy's house. I don't know if I'll have the cars on the front, but there's the lake. There's the road I was looking for, if we just zoom in. So basically what we're looking for is this road that comes down here, where it meets this crossroads. That is the guy's house. Let's see if we can see that in the sim. Okay, and that is the lake over here. There's the road. This is the road network. And if I'm not mistaken, this is what we're looking for. Pretty much exactly where the GPS coordinate was set. I mean, it's not exact, <laughs> but it's not bad. <laughs> but if this is your house, do step out and say hi next time we fly over. Anyway, that is how you find anything, not just a house, that's how you find anything in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Once the G1000s and that kind of thing are working properly, you won't need to edit those text files. Instead, you'll be able to go in and create a custom waypoint and put the lack long in. But the technique is still the same. Going via Google Maps, getting the coordinates, punching them in, and then flying over to them. It's so much easier when you do it this way rather than just flying around trying to work out where you are. And particularly if you're trying to find, say, your mate's house and you don't know what it looks like from above. Because let's face it, not many people do. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you find that somehow useful. I hope you uh, manage to find your friends' houses and your houses and have a lot of fun in the sim. Until next time, guys, take care and happy flying.